What's up guys, my name is Adapt, welcome back to another video on the channel. So we're back with another video looking at a pros custom text and player instructions last video. We did cross these custom text and player instructions, you guys seem to enjoy that. The feedback and stuff according to the statistics of the video, the video seemed to do very well compared to others and if you guys want to see more content like this, I'll bring you guys more content like this. Just let me know in the comment section what you want to see and depending on if the video does well how the audience retention is like things like that then i'll continue to do videos like that so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at huge gorillas custom text and player instructions now you guys can see on the screen right now we're using the same team this team has been solid for me it's been very good it's everything you want really it isn't up there with the most expensive teams it isn't expensive at all to be honest probably a couple hundred k but it gets the job done and that's the most important thing i haven't got players like hullet in here i haven't got the Thierry on reese like having my main team but what i have is just a solid foundation a solid team right here and a team that can pretty much do everything if i'm a good player on the controller if i know what i'm doing i know how to use a game mechanics i know how to play fifa then i should be doing okay with this team although some teams are going to have the advantage i should do okay in the gameplay because these players they aren't bad players if you were to look at the beginning of the game and someone was to have a team like this you'd say this is a great team now that there's so many better cards out you'd say this team is rubbish really you've got one player maybe he would make it into some people's teams which is a team that's in Santi Cazorla and that would make it in an average team really he only costs like 100 and something k so this team is not expensive at all guys but there are weekly objectives at the moment now I'm stuck between do I go for the weekly objectives like I did last week but what I did last week right was I left it a bit too late I wasn't looking at the squad battles games I didn't take updates into consideration and what happened is I had about an hour left and I couldn't play one more game of squad battles because I maxed out all the games and I had to wait for an opponent update which was in something like a couple of hours time and only had one hour left to do the objective so I ended up missing out on one of the objectives which was assist 15 goals using Eredivisie players in squad battles on professional difficulty I think it was I had one game left and I couldn't get 15 assists no matter how good my team is in squad battles maybe if i had a full team in the season air division team i could have got it in one game but it's just very unlikely you're going to get 15 assists in one game unless you're playing on something like beginner or amateur but it's unprofessional and i just couldn't do it in one game it was very unlikely and i didn't want to go into that game for no reason when i could be doing something else like bringing you guys a video but if I want to start on these weekly objectives, I've done the French one near enough. If I want to start on these weekly objectives, I have to tomorrow or something because I don't want to be left in a position where I miss out on another foot swap deals card because I missed out on one last week. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. It depends on my decision making really. Do I make another video for you guys? Do I spend my time playing games or fifa really just to bring you guys reviews and stuff or, or do i put some time into doing the weekly objectives now i could try and do both like i've done in previous videos the, the french players the goals with the french players i might be able to do whilst recording i should be able to do that the goals with saudi league players in division one rivals that's not going to be nice guys i don't know how much the saudi league team this season players are at the moment so i'm going to have to look at that first and it's just going to be tricky if the people i'm coming up against aren't going for them weekly objectives it'll put me at a disadvantage the squad battle is that objective i can sort that out really that will sort itself out and the arias defenders assist in rivals is that too much to ask i think so in div 1 rivals maybe if you're in div 5 or something you could get that arias card but in div 1 assist with defenders if you're not good at corners you're gonna have trouble with that so i'll bring you guys an updated just in-game stats from the players the games i played with them how many goals and assists they have but 
As far as elaborating on the players and stuff, this team I've had it for quite a few games now and I've made a couple of videos on this team so you guys know my opinions on all of these players and you guys have seen the 4-3-3-2 formation and you know it's just the formation I use to get chemistry on all the players and then when we get into the game plans we switch things around there so guys that's the team right there let's get into the custom tactics and the player instructions and I will be right back now getting into the custom tactics guys so what I did was I made a bit of a mistake here I didn't take into consideration that these are just the balanced and huge grill actually used the 4231 formation if you didn't know I believe it's the 4231 I think he does but I changed the tactics and I changed the instructions according to that but this was on my balanced game plan so what i need to do now is go to the defensive ones so we corrected it on the defensive custom tactics here so that's why the balance and defensive are the same because i made a little mistake right there but i just couldn't be bothered to change it back it isn't much of a difference anyway because we changed your defensive game plan as soon as the game starts anyway so use his drop back four balls of width five balls of depth then he has balanced defensive style which i think is a good call right there width he's he's got it at a medium level players in the box he's got it around the same now for width and depth for his defensive style i was quite curious why he's done that because usually if you guys see my videos and my formation reviews and updated custom tactics videos i usually have width higher than depth because i know how op low depth in this game is but he's got width higher than depth maybe he likes that because he's an aggressive player or something. Maybe he likes to have his team further up the pitch. But that's just something I wouldn't do personally. Maybe this video has changed my mind. You guys are going to have to find out in the gameplay. But for the offensive story, he has balanced width and plays in the box at the same level. Three balls of corners, three balls of free kicks. I haven't got much to say about that. You guys know what I usually do. I usually do three balls of corners, one ball of free kicks. But that's because I do a three kick set piece. Now, this is the team we are using in game, and this is how it lines up. So, we've got Kondogbi on the left, Modric on the right. Then, we've got Kazola central cam, Bayou right cam, and Dembele left cam. And then, I have Ben Yedder up top. You guys would know this from the Crossy video I made yesterday, so I don't have to go too much into that. Now, getting into huge grillers, custom tactics, which are a bit different from other people's. He uses overlap on both fullbacks and stay back core attacking. Stay back core attacking is the norm really but overlap you don't really see many people use overlap this shows how much of an attacking player huge griller is he's always been an aggressive attacking player you guys have seen through the fifas if you followed him since around fifa 16 he abused the scoop turns he was constantly attacking he's always been an attacking player he's always going to be someone to outscore you if he's going to score seven or eight that's the type of player he is and you can't let him attack against you otherwise if you give him too much of the ball then you're going to get punished and that's the reasoning behind overlap i do believe then for both dms he has cut passing lane stable core attacking and cover center this is quite normal and you see it with most pros most youtubers using cut passing lanes on both dms I've had a video where I've had someone else use cut passing lanes and stay back core attacking on both and cover center as well. I think maybe it was Joxon, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So there are other pros who use these custom tactics on both DMs. Then for his central cam, he hasn't done anything. I wouldn't do anything to my central cam. Then he's got to get into the box for the cross on his right cam and left cam. This is what cross he does as well. And this is really the norm. This is what people usually use getting to the box for the cross. And I find that to work the best for your right cam and left cam in this formation. And it worked well yet again in the gameplay you guys are going to see. And then on his striker, he uses getting behind and stay forward. That's what a load of people use as well. Cross, he didn't use stay forward before, but I think he's resorted to stay forward now so everyone's kind of using getting behind and stay forward i would use getting behind and stay forward since the beginning of this game i've always been the type of person to use getting behind and stay forward just throughout all fifas that's the best combination for me in my opinion maybe if you've got someone like peter crouch for example a player who's that tall peter crouch is retired now anyway maybe a player like lukaku i'd say in this game 
I don't know who else off the top of my head. Ibrahimovic, his team this season card could do a getting behind role, but he'd be more suited to balanced or target man or hold up the ball type of player. And you can have him on stay forward as well. That's the only scenario in which I change your striker's instructions drastically. Usually I use getting behind or stay forward. Or if I wanted to utilize a uh, player's physical presence. So for example, Thierry Henry. I've got in my main team the prime icon Thierry Henry. Sometimes I'll use him on balanced and stay forward because he can provide hold up play for the right and the left attacking midfielders. If they are more attacking players and have good shooting stats, someone like Neymar, for example, is someone who can play off of other players and he can do just as well as a striker if you get the right card, especially his Cam 94 rated card, I do believe. So guys, those are the custom tactics, those are the player instructions, now let's get into the gameplay. Now getting into the gameplay guys, so we come up against the guy with Ramsey. He had a Firmino in there, he had headliner Nautovic, he also had weekly objectives team this season Declan Rice in there, so I knew that he had a decent team, I wasn't too sure how good of a player this guy was but we were eventually going to find out and it took a lot to break him down, I was doing some patient play trying to frustrate him and get him to be rash and that is what he was. He gives away a penalty to me and I take full opportunity with that with Santi Cazola's 99 penalties, put it into the back of the net and that was enough to win the first game. So we get a very good result and then we come up against an extremely great team. This guy had Red Ericsson, he had Red Van Dyke, you guys just saw. I think he had an icon in there. I remember seeing an icon just now, I think I did. He also had Aurier in there, I do believe. He had a very good team. But we score our first goal from a flick up, get it into the box. Bale wins it on his head and he puts it into the back of the net. So we take the 1-0 lead right there. So you get off to a very good start. Now we're working it through the pitch. We play the ball to Ben Yedder. Ben Yedder scores a goal. He just scores a goal right there. Sorry guys, I just paused for a second. I don't know what I was doing right there. I didn't really know what to say, but we do go ahead. We made it 2-0 right there. And this game is pretty much finishing right now. So, plays it to Kazola. Kazola plays it to Ben Yedder. That's some nice play right there. I couldn't even keep up with it. Dembele is on the ball. Dembele is going to wait for someone to make a run into the box. He's going to do a double drag back. And then he is going to put it into the back and net. He does it on his own. He doesn't need any help. So he scores and he makes it 3-0 right there. And that is how the game ends. And I believe this is the last game of this video maybe. And this was a high scoring one. So this guy had a very good team as you guys saw there. He had a foot birthday card. I'm not sure what foot birthday card it was. Sergio Ramos was recently released today. His foot birthday card. So that card looks decent. But at this stage in the game, does anyone want an untradeable Ramos for 300 and something K to complete now? I don't think so, to be honest. I think most people already have very good untradeable strikers in their team or other better strikers and they don't want to put 300 or so K into a Sergio Ramos. You can get a better striker at a much better price than getting an untradeable striker for 300 K guys. But we do go ahead, we switched up our style a bit in this game, just some quick passing. I was really trying to pass through this guy, I was trying to make it difficult for him, I was trying to play quick FIFA, I was experimenting with a few things right here. And I just wanted to play quick guys and that is exactly what I did and I caught this guy off guard and I just wanted to score goal after goal in this game and we do make it 3-1 with Gareth Bale he's gonna score a nice goal right there this guy tries to pass it in a very bad position and he pays for that he has some very good goalkeeper movement right there I thought I messed that opportunity up but we're gonna come right back with a goal from Santi Cazorla and that all came from him giving the ball away in a very silly way guys so he made a very bad pass in a position where he shouldn't be passing the ball like that especially when he can see one of my players but we go ahead and we score another goal i believe actually he gives a penalty right here don't know what he was doing just lost this call right there 
and we're going to capitalize on that to make it 5-1 because all our puts it down the middle and that is how this game ends so guys this video is coming to an end if you enjoyed it smash that like button also subscribe to the channel down below and i'll see you guys in the next video see you guys later peace Damn, I'm on red alert.